well, it's fall, I've got one of these nice space heaters, right? And it normally runs off our friend propane. Well, they suck down propane really fast, and I'm sick and tired of replacing the tanks. So I'm going to see if I can get this thing to run off of natural gas. All right. So basically, propane, if you didn't know, when you connect it here, you've got a low-pressure regulator, which takes the high-pressure tank and converts it to low pressure. And on this particular regulator that came with the unit, you can see, if you look at the sticker on there, it's designed to run off one PSI. So natural gas in your house is already regulated at the meter. It runs low pressure, all right? So you don't need a regulator. So I've already got natural gas out here on my deck. I use it for my grill. It's a one inch line out here. The grill only needs half an inch. Uh, so there should be plenty of volume to run this. The question is whether or not the unit here will run off of natural gas and produce the effect I'm looking for. So you can see here, I've got it temporarily connected just for testing purposes to see what would happen. So if I open up the unit, pretty straightforward, got a 3 8 inch gas hose running in to the inlet where the low pressure regulator from uh, the propane tank originally was connected. So I plugged it in here where initially the uh, original connection was, screwed right in, standard connector, fired it up, turned on, but the problem was that it was a perfectly blue clean flame, okay, and that's good for heat purposes, but it's not good for the visual effect this thing was designed for. So natural gas has a lot less energy in it than uh, propane, less BTUs, so, and the ratio from atmosphere to fuel uh, is going to be different to get that yellow flame I'm looking for in this case within that glass cylinder. So what I did was remove the unit here and uh, block off the vents that were there um, for the propane. All right, and that now, as you can see if I turn it on, let's get the pilot on here. Okay, so now that I blocked the vents off, and it's still got plenty of ventilation in there. If you can see, it's getting air from within the chamber here, which is also vented, so plenty of airflow can come in here and uh, get to the air it needs. But on the unit, which I'll take off again just so I can show you what I did, uh, and then I'm going to make it a little more permanent. You can see now I've got that pretty yellow flame I'm looking for. Uh, so I've got the heat and the aesthetics. Uh, so it will work. However, um, it's on high right now, and you can see the flame. It's daylight, so it's a little tough to tell. It's going to about here. So with propane, it was going all the way about three quarters to the top. And what's happening here, which I'll have to modify as well, is the jet, the actual port size within the... Uh, unit that dictates the amount of flow of fuel can go in there uh, is not big enough for natural gas. So if you've ever converted, you know, a grill from propane to natural gas, you've got to get different nozzles for that. Uh, that's another fun project. Uh, you get larger nozzles with bigger diameter holes. So I'm going to have to take that port out of there and drill the hole just a little bit bigger, and that's going to increase the flow of gas into the cylinder. And after doing that, I'll have a yellow flame going all the way to the top. No more propane tanks and uh, life will be good. So I'm gonna take this unit out now so I can show you those vents I was talking about uh, that need to be blocked off uh, in order to uh, get this effect. So at first I thought this was gonna be a fail because I had a pure blue flame and then I realized it was the uh, oxygen to fuel ratio that was causing this. Uh, so you can see it's a yellow flame, but it's not a dirty yellow flame. There's no soot or anything like that building up in this glass cylinder. So here's the unit out on the table. Okay, here's the knob I was turning before the igniter. So here's the assembly inside. Fuel comes in from here. You've got a wires going over here to this relay box. That's your motion sensor, so if you move it around here, a little click. It's likely a mercury switch in there, so if it gets knocked over, it turns off automatically, cuts off the fuel supply. So that's what those wires are. This leads to the pilot light. That's your fuel supply for the pilot light over here. And uh, I'm going to remove this assembly, so I'm just going to take this guy out over here. Move that off to the side. Take the knob off here. <coughs> take this nut off, retaining that. And then there's a screw on the bottom of the unit that you have to take off too, but I already took that off. I didn't put it back on because I was testing, but that's right there. So now it's loose. Okay, you see? So now you need to take this unit out because inside of here, after this 90, is that jet I'm talking about, which we're going to drill a little bit larger and see what the results will be. So I'm going to increase it by like 
half a millimeter or so just for testing i'll go in increments until i get it to the level i want because if you drill it too big probably gonna have flames coming out the top and that would be no good i almost forgot the most important part before i take this apart i want to show you something um remember i told you before the uh originally when i plugged in the gas it was pure blue flame no visual effect but heat well these are the vents i was talking about there's one right here on the left and one on the right and with propane those are necessary to get the effect of uh, the yellow burning uh, flame that we're looking for with natural gas it's not necessary so you can uh you know put some hose clamps over that maybe uh, i'm gonna actually use some foil tape aluminum put a couple layers around there this thing doesn't get really hot but you obviously want to use something that's not going to melt or uh deal with any of that ambient heat coming from this burner over here so foil tape couple layers should be fine there i'm gonna wrap that around put that off to the side now we've got this loose over here like we need and just like i suspected this guy right here that's your jet nozzle so this diameter of the hole, a little tiny hole, needs to be a little bit bigger. So this is likely threaded on there. I'm just going to try to unthread that now and then drill it out a tiny bit bigger. Hopefully I have the right drill bit for that. Okay, there's your jet nozzle. Now let's go and find a drill bit to drill this out a little tiny bit. Okay, I'm back. Had to run to the store and buy uh, drill bits because I left my drill bits uh, on my friend's boat when I was helping him rebuild the engine. But anyway... Here's our port, and I got several different bit sizes, and I'm basically gonna figure out first what size this is stock, and then just basically keep stepping it up and testing it until I get the height of the flame I'm looking for based on the volume of gas coming in. Uh, also worth noting at this point, I should have mentioned this earlier in the video, you're obviously gonna void your warranty with this, one, and two, by doing this, um, if you were to put a propane tank back in the unit, your port would be too big at this point, and you'd probably have way too much flame on high anyway. You can probably still regulate it with the knob, but uh, you'd have to keep an eye on that if you ever want to go back to propane for portability purposes. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, start figuring this stuff out. Let's start with the smallest, which is 5 64ths. Let's see what that's like. I can't believe I had to buy these crap drill bits. Anyway. Five sixty-fourths will not fit in, so it is slightly, slightly bigger than stock. So maybe we'll start with that. Alright, wind, you're affecting my test. It's getting there. Slightly better, but I really want it to get up all the way. Now it's daytime, so it's like you gotta really pay attention because if it starts to get too high, obviously this thing's gonna get too hot and then the top will glow red, and that's not the goal. So, okay, here comes 330 seconds. Jet size. Ooh, much nicer. I think we got a winner. Perfect, it's just like stock. Wow, that's great. 3.30 seconds drill bit, people, there you go. Just licking right about here. It's not coming out and over, which the next drill bit size probably would. So 3.30 seconds and you got yourself a very pretty, wow, it's perfect really perfect badass no more stupid propane tanks to refill and this turned out to be a project and a mod so mods and projects successful modification of this thing now I gotta actually do all the plumbing properly to code and put some pipe dope and get everything actually fully tightened and wrap this thing up uh, this was just burning. It's not even hot. I mean this thing hardly gets hot at all So you don't really have to go crazy with steel bands over these vents um, I'm just gonna wrap it two or three times with uh, This metal HVAC tape 
That probably will be good for life. I'm so excited to not have to waste propane on these things anymore. Natural gas is a lot cheaper. And readily available without running out in the middle of your party or something, right? Well, I just thought of a fun test. Now that the port size has increased, I wonder how it'll work with propane. Obviously, it's going to be more flame. But let's see how much more. And can you regulate it with the, uh, the nozzle? You're not putting any extra stress on the regulator because the fuel source and supply is all the same. Only thing that's different is a larger port size. Oh, and the blocked vents. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. But anyways, let's see what happens. flame yeah flames comes out the top on high now but you can keep it turned down and it's a definitely oh yeah it's really sooty because no vent I don't, I don't want to get my tube black inside but it's throwing some soot now definitely brighter so yeah it's dirty throw soot propane no like this mod maximum power crazy flames coming out of the top that's not safe sir all right let's turn this off and get to uh, some plumbing I'll show you what the natural gas looks like when it's done well, you know what I just thought of, is it actually might not just be the port size that's causing that dirty flame, it's probably because the vents are blocked off mainly what's causing the bad air fuel ratio with propane as a fuel source. So uh, I'll do another test, I think, uh, later on. I gotta get to piping this plumbing underneath the deck. But uh, I think if you take that tape off, if you wanted to, you could probably regulate the flame to a height that you like don't put it on high obviously and uh it may not be a dirty flame if i remove that tape so for propane so i'll test that later and let you know how that goes because i'm also curious okay it kind of turned to nighttime because i had to do all the plumbing under the deck for the uh the valves for these two new um natural gas heaters but anyway as promised i just did the second one i'm working on here that's number two number one is over there um i'm gonna leave this one vented with the larger port to see if we can run propane clean. Uh, I'm just curious, because if that's the case, you can just take the tape off the vents when you're not using it for natural gas, and uh, you can still have it be portable with propane if necessary, so stand by. So I'm about to do the test I described. This is larger port with propane, vents open. Now, first thing I noticed is when you light the pilot, the pilot looks like shit. Got a yellow flame on there, but whatever, we'll see what the results are. Now with the natural gas, the pilot and the larger port, as you can see, is a perfect pilot. So natural gas, that's the right size. Now, let's see what happens when we turn this on. I suspect there's going to be a lot of soot. Whoa. Think I'll stand back till that condensation dries. Looks like a clean flame. Okay, let's turn it up a little. You gotta be really sensitive with this knob now. Hey, it's not sitting. Wow, so it still does run off propane. That's exactly the same flame as before with the larger port. The knob, of course, is turned down. If I turn it all the way up, it'll obviously be way too much fuel, but hey still works cool so if you want to use it with propane after you drill the port out you still can um, you just gotta make sure you take the tape off those vents so it gets the right air fuel ratio you don't get all that sitting like you saw earlier but all right well we're done with propane 
Okay, now just testing that this three-quarter line is actually good for both of these. There's one on natural gas. There's two on natural gas. And there's the summit, making sure it can get to maximum temperature. So it looks like we're all done. And they can run on dual fuel now, which is actually pretty neat. Just gotta be careful with that knob when you're on propane with this jet size. The same procedure used here will work for just about any propane to natural gas conversion as far as uh, outdoor heaters and outdoor grills go. Uh, I would not recommend playing with the ports or doing a conversion on an indoor uh, natural gas or propane utility. Um, but for grills, outdoor heaters, this should work for uh, for most applications. The same type of procedure. Just take your time stepping up that jet size or multiple jet sizes if you're dealing with like a barbecue grill or something like that. They usually have jets on each burner. Anyhow, hopefully this helps you out, especially if you have this same model heater. At least you know exactly what nozzle to use or what nozzle size to use. If you like this video, please hit subscribe, like the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And... I'll answer any questions when I see them. Thanks.